Alrighty, welcome everyone to Value Investing Live. Today we are pleased to feature Caesar Bryan, manager of the Gamco International Growth Fund and the Gabelli Gold Fund. He is a member of the Global Investment Team, which is responsible for the Gamco Global Growth Fund and the Gamco Global Opportunity Fund. In addition to these roles, he is on the management team of the Gamco Global Gold and Natural Resources and Income Trust and Gamco Natural Resources Gold and Income two of the firm's closed-end funds. As always, please feel free to post your questions and comments throughout the presentation in that chat section over there on YouTube, but keep in mind all of these questions will be held until we get to the end of the presentation and we go ahead and jump into the Q&A section. And without further ado, I'm pleased to present you Caesar Bryan. We'll let him go ahead and kick off the presentation. Great. Thanks, Graham, uh, very much, and thank you all for tuning in. What I would thought would I what, what I thought I would do today is just talk a little bit about gold and our approach to uh, gold, uh, gold stocks. And you can see from, from, from this slide that um, I have a, a, a partner, a colleague, uh, Chris Mancini, who's uh, the, um, the dedicated gold uh, analyst uh, for, this, uh, for this strategy. So, uh, you know, he knows everything. I know a lot about very little, and of course the analyst knows a lot about a lot. So um, you've got me today. So uh, uh, if you have any questions later or, or comments, or, you know, of course, uh, feel free to contact myself or or, or my colleague uh, Chris uh, Mancini. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> my I, actually, I have another colleague, Chris, who's in charge of the slides. Uh, I I think the decision was taken that it was too much for me to talk and move the slides. So. Um, so Chris is going to do the slides, and I'll do uh, I'll do uh, some of the talking. So today, uh, just a comment on uh, on the, you know the the gold price, uh, where we think uh, gold companies uh, how they're doing, a little bit about valuations, and a couple of uh, stocks and stories that uh, that we own in our portfolio. Uh, next, Chris. You know this is uh, this is the. Um, the bull market, which has been in existence for, for gold and gold stocks uh, since um, 2016. And, and I just want to make a couple of points here. One is that, um, that since the mid 80s, I mean, for a long time, uh, gold equities uh, through 2000 really uh, did nothing and uh, massively underperformed uh, both treasuries uh, and, and regular stocks. And um, since 2016, well, actually, since the year 2000, gold has outperformed. Gold, the gold price has outperformed, I believe, uh, treasuries and, and uh, the S&P. But since 2016, there's been a solid uh, outperformance by both gold and the gold equities relative to, to fixed income and, um, and the general stock market. So we're in, a, we're in a bull market. We think we're in early days uh, certainly in the gold equity bull market. Um, and um, just the other point to make is that uh, the prior high in gold was just over 1900, about 1920 or so, $1,920, you know, all the way back in September 2011. So on a real basis, gold is, is, is certainly not at a, at a new high. Um, next slide, uh, Chris. Um, this gives me an opportunity to, uh, to demystify gold. Uh, in some respects, gold is a, a tough um, subject or, or, or um, investment opportunity. Well, it's not really an investment, but um, to, to discuss. And I think that, that may be because it was illegal for American, for, for US citizens to own uh, monetary gold since, until 1975. So, so it wasn't something that was really spoken about uh, much uh, prior to 1975. That happened, of course, in, in 1933 uh, under President Roosevelt. So, so what I've done here is just simply to show or, 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 or really to illustrate what, what J.P. Morgan said, and that is gold is money, nothing else, back in 1910 or so. Uh, so, so how I've done that is just to show gold as the constant and how the dollars moved relative to gold. So on the August the 15th, 1971, uh, when um, President Nixon took the US off the gold standard, the official price of gold was $35, but the unofficial price 
or, or where gold was traded was about $43. So $1,000 uh, would have bought you over 23 ounces of gold back in 71. At the end of June, with gold at 1781, you could have bought just a little over half an ounce of, uh, of, uh, of gold. So that actually represents a dollar depreciation of 97.6%, and actually it's worse now. So, so, so gold isn't actually an investment, it's just money. And it's the equivalent really of, 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 uh, of a fiat currency. It just sits there, no income, no risk, and always liquid. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. So just a couple of um, slides, which you've all seen, it just is a prop for me to make a, you know, a couple of points. Um, and of course we have zero interest rates uh, and, 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 and the Fed has said that that's gonna be the case for, for, for a while. But you know, the point here I really want to, to, to make is that the, the, the Fed seems to be expanding its, um, its mandate or expanding its mandate may be the wrong word, but, but, but expanding its involvement uh, in the economy. And what I mean by this is if you look back to uh, you, you know, a few decades ago, really they manipulated, I, I mean, they controlled short-term interest rates. Then that expanded and, and became uh, clear or, or, or you know, obvious during the financial crisis where the Fed embarked on a very large asset purchase uh, program. And, uh, and, and, and what's happened in this crisis is, is the Fed has is, is, is moved further and, and is really acting um, together with the fiscal authorities in, 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 a, in, in a number of programs and schemes that, that they've come up with in the last few months. So, so there's been a gradual sort of greater involvement, you know, as we've, uh, as we've progressed. Now, is that important? Maybe not. But could it feed into an eroding confidence in, in the Fed, uh, you know, in the, um, in the future? And I just want to highlight on this chart in 2019, when uh, in September 2019, when the Fed, um, prior to the crisis, when the Fed actually purchased or, or injected about $400 billion of cash to shore up the repo market, that just illustrates the, fr the fragility of the financial system prior to the uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis, which took hold, of course, back in you know, February, uh, February and March. So, so with the Fed, you know, greater and greater involvement, um, the, 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 the risk is more malinvestment. Uh, if there's no cost to money, uh, there's no risk-free rate. And on, on, on the one side, and, and you know, distortions. And then on the other side, of course, uh, savers uh, and, and, and those uh, beneficiaries of pension plans, of course, uh, you know, pay, pay the price. So, so there is a cost to this, to this policy. Um, next slide. Again, you know, we've all seen this, not, nothing new here. I, I, I think this just gives me um, an opportunity to make a couple of points. One is that um, coming out of the Second World War when the debt was at a similar level that it is now, um, the Fed engineered interest rates uh, less than the rate of inflation. So it was a long period of negative uh, interest rates, uh, negative real rates, should, you know, I, uh, I should say. So nominal uh, yields were much higher than, than, the, than the rate of inflation. And, and this, of course, allowed the, the real burden of the debt to be reduced over a period of time. So we could be moving into a similar situation uh, now where looking forward, uh, real rates will be, will be negative. And that's a way of... Um, lessening the, the real burden of, of, uh, uh, of debt. And negative real rates are, we think, positive for, for, uh, for gold. Um, so that's really my you know, gold comments. I, I'm, I'm sure there's, we've all heard broadly the similar things, but uh, you know, that's our, 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 our sort of stance to, to, towards gold, that, that it could be a, a, an interesting portfolio diversifier. For, uh, for investment uh, portfolios. Um, next, now we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the gold equities. Um, Chris, the next slide. 
Oh, thanks, yeah, okay. Um, so just a couple of comments about, uh, you know, current earnings and, 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 and where we are now. Obviously the main driver is, uh, uh, is the gold price and, and uh, to, to these uh, gold, gold stocks. And, um, you know, back in the March quarter, gold was 1300, you know, now it's, uh, you know, over 1900. And uh, so, you know, that's the main driver of revenue. So that's very, very positive for, for these companies. They have been affected uh, by, by the COVID uh, crisis. But remember, for, for a mining company or resource company, uh, a production interruption is, is, is uh, just a delay of revenues, not necessarily lost revenues. Uh, now they have, so to the extent that production has been shut down, yes, it's raised costs a little bit, but, but, but that production generally hasn't been lost and, and will come back uh, at, at, at some point. Um, there were actually um, quite limited uh, pr production cutbacks. I mean, it could have been worse than it was. It was scattered across various different uh, geographies. I would say South America was probably hardest, the hardest hit and some of the mines in Canada were shut down where, where, where communities, reasonably remote communities were, were very fearful of, of, uh, of, of the virus coming into their community. So, so, so companies, you know, closed, uh, closed down operations, but most of them are now back and running. I think Oxshield Maculata mine was one of the last, and that came online a few days ago. Um, now, local currency changes, when, this is less relevant now, but, but at the depth of the crisis, the dollar was very strong and the Australian uh, dollar and the uh, Canadian dollar were, were weak and other currencies where a lot of our portfolio companies uh, mine gold, but were actually quite weak, which raises the profitability uh, of those operations. That's largely been uh, mitigated uh, at this point, but generally a strong dollar improves the profitability of most of, of the um, of, of the portfolio companies, certainly the, the, the we own, because production is outside of, of the US. So, so local currency costs are, are, are lessened, while of course local currency revenues with a higher dollar and higher gold price uh, improve profitability. With, you know, in terms of uh, input costs, there were some, some um, shortages of, of, of reagents, uh, but you know the oil price is, is is sharply lower. You know oil. You know depending on the locality and 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 the power source. You know oil can be an important or diesel. You know input uh, costs for 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 mines and and that's lower. That's helpful for for profitability. And companies have had to deal with with you know increased costs in terms of the movement uh, of 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 people and and other. Uh, costs associated with local communities, which of course we've read, you know, we've read a lot about. So, you know, overall net neutral, we don't think it's been hugely impactful for, for the industry as a whole, the, the, the COVID crisis. Um, next uh, slide. So, um, relative to the market, you know, we think these, uh, the gold sector, the gold equities are actually uh, relatively um, inexpensive. And what we've shown here is, is a sort of a run rate at around about night at the current price of gold. You know, what free cash flow could be expected on this year's production. So, so this isn't a, a, a necessarily a forecast of, of what's going to happen this year, but, but, but at a constant price, what's the earning ability of, uh, of some, you know, of uh, four companies. So we've chosen, you know, the two largest cap companies in the sector, Barrett, Gold and, and, and Newmont, they both have a similar market cap of about $54 billion. They each have a little bit of uh, uh, net debt. And you can see here the free cash flow yield is, you know, for, for both of them, you know, well over um, 5%. And, 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 and those are outside of the royalty companies, the large cap companies are the most highly valued uh, in the gold sector. We've then chosen, you know, a couple of, so basically random actually, a couple of uh, other portfolio holdings um, of, uh, of the fund. And uh, one is B2 Gold, uh, which is um, about a 7 billion market cap Canadian-based uh, producer. 
and and uh, we show their you know similar and 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 that's a highly valued. They've had a good growth profile. Another Dundee precious metal, uh, you know, much smaller company with with a couple of mines in Bulgaria, funnily enough, um, and we can show you know really interesting sort of free cash flow yield uh, at the current price. And some of the smaller mid cap companies are maybe not as cheap, as cheap as this as this company, but but certainly. With free cash flow yields well in excess of 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 ten percent, so we think that stacks up positively relative to 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 the rest of the um, of the equity market. Now, next slide, please. This is uh, really an important point that uh, that I'd like to make, and that is that that uh, we believe that the gold equities in a in the current gold price environment or a better environment will be able to um, generate uh, pretty strong returns uh, of, of cash to, to, uh, to shareholders. Again, just we've taken the four companies that we showed in, this, in, in the prior slide, and uh, two were Barrick and Newmont uh, have been paying a dividend, and we can show you here um, how, the, uh, how those payouts uh, have changed uh, over last year. So you know, Barrick just announced a, a dividend uh, a hike, and, and and now on an annualized basis, it's twenty eight cents a return, current return of one percent, which isn't you know that interesting, but it certainly is almost twice the ten year Treasury. And um, and uh, Newmont uh, last year, I believe, raised the, their uh, annual payout to to a dollar a share, which is uh, one point five percent. Now these two B two Gold and Dundee. Um, just initiated uh, payouts, and you can see them here: five cents and, and, and eight cents, respectively. And again, you know, their their dividend yield at the current share price is about 0.8 and 1.1 percent. Now, there are uh, companies that uh, that have much bigger payouts. I mean, a, a position in the portfolio sentiment has, which is a London-based uh, gold miner, has about a four percent yield, and there are others. In Australia, which have a, a greater current return than we've shown in these examples. But the point is, these companies are going to be generating lots of free cash. And one of the options they have is to increase the payouts to, to, to shareholders. And uh, we would, I think, prefer them to do it through, through dividends than, than through share, share buybacks. But you know, maybe there'll be some managements that, that choose uh, that route uh, as well as um, you know, as well as raising raising their pounds to shareholders. We think this is really an important driver and, 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 and we want managements to, to, to um, I mean, not obviously to increase debt levels or anything to pay out, but the extent they've got free cash to, uh, to um, reward uh, long suffering shareholders, I should say. Anyway, certainly long-term shareholders have been long suffering shareholders in this, um, uh, in this sector. So this I think is an important driver, um, income, from, from gold equities in, in basically what is a, a low to zero uh, rate, uh, rate world. Um, next slide, please. I've just chosen, uh, courtesy of uh, Scotiabank, just one valuation metric because, you know, just going through slide after slide of valuation gets, uh, you know, gets uh, a little tedious when we've got. So, so this is what I chose. Price to NAV, and we actually internally calculate our own NAV on the on on the uh, on the shares in the uh, in the GDX, and and what you can see here is really a pretty massive derating uh, of the shares. You know, starting from you know, 2000, you know, eight, 2010, the last financial crisis, and um, and then since 1916, uh, since 2016, a slight. Uh, revaluation coinciding with actually a good performance uh, from, from from the gold equities, but nowhere back to to uh, you know prior levels. Now, if you look at other metrics, and I just wrote a note to myself here, you know, PE or price to cash flow, um, you know, from 1985 to um, to 2009, 2010, uh, basically an average, you know, mid teens uh, at least, and then now is. Uh, you know, well below uh, ten times. So on that metric too, there's been a uh, a derating, and uh, you know other metrics 
such as uh, market cap per ounce of reserve adjusted or divided by by the uh, the gold price as well show show the shares to be rated now the the, the why this happened was because uh, companies have become highly levered uh, production costs had risen rapidly in, during, during the early 2000s and and there was really lack of profitability at the time of uh, of, of the peak gold price in, in in 2011 so the companies basically uh, the cost of production was equal to the run in the gold price, and and meanwhile, many of the companies had taken on a lot of debt. So it was a, it, 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 they they deserved to be derated, and that's exactly what happened. We think it what you know has now gone too far, and we sense a, a little bit of a reversal in that. You know, debt levels have been cut, um, costs have been brought under control. There's been no increase in the cost of production for since. Uh, for, for the last five years. So uh, at least five years, 2013, I think. So, um, you know, costs are, are stable, the gold price up, margins are up, banshees being re repaired, yet um, the general electric market has been revalued, yet we don't believe this has happened for, for, this, um, for this sector. Now, now the, 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 the blue sky or, or the fantasy here is that, is that if there's a perception in the market that that the gold price is on an extended uh, bull market, or if the gold price, or if gold might be reintroduced into the financial architecture, or there may be, um, you know, some sort of reintroduction of gold, then that then I think the discount rate that the market puts on 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 on, on future earnings will 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 decline, or another way, the multiples on current earnings will go up, and. Uh, and, and 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 the sector could be revalued, you know, quite quite substantially. So the sector will become sort of a short duration asset into a much longer duration asset. So um, you know that's you know we'll see how how that goes. But 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 there's the potential for that should go, you know, be be seen as as, as playing a more important role uh, going forward. Uh, in which case, I mean, the reason being then the downside is limited, and there'll be sort of optionality for in these. Um, Gold uh, for owning the gold shares, but you know we'll see how we'll see how that goes. Uh, next slide. Thanks. Um, just to highlight that um, that you know we said that the gold price is now above where it was at its peak in 2011, but the gold stocks, as represented by the XAU index, are still 35 percent uh, below. You know we think the companies are in much better shape. Yes, there's been uh, share issuements and, and, and some production declines, but adjusted for that, we think there's a much um, cleaner, better story in the gold equities uh, uh, now. Uh, so yeah, 35% below that, that, that high. And just to highlight, this is, um, this is a tiny sector. Um, the market cap of the XAU index, when I looked last, um, I think it was on, on, on Thursday, um, the third of uh, September was about 290 billion. Now there are a few more. There are a few gold shares that aren't in that index, but that's basically you know the gold universe. And J.P. Morgan, by comparison, had a market cap of 350. So this is a tiny sector. Um, obviously, um, you know, very underowned by by uh, by uh, definition. Um, next slide. Uh, you know, I've seen I've I've talked for a rather long time, so maybe I'll just go through this in in um, you know pretty quickly. You know, we're bottoms up fundamental investors. We uh, invest across all market caps and, and on a on a global basis. We really look for 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 three things in a gold um, equity, and, and that is the underlying assets, you know, the quality of 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 uh, the company's mines, basically uh, management. This is a tricky industry. Uh, many small companies, so uh, you know we like to uh, follow, get to know uh, managers, and 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 then the third leg, of course, is uh, valuation. And I just mentioned that we do um, run, uh, our primary valuation tool is is uh, NAV on a sort of NAV basis. For you know we, we take the NAV of each mine and each company, and then assign a valuation uh, to that. Um, and this slide. Really just gives me an opportunity to talk and, and you know to highlight you know a couple of the um, 
stocks that, that, that we own and, and how we think about things. In, you know, in terms of the first example, uh, Barrick uh, Gold, uh, this was not really, uh, it's a very small uh, holding in, in, in the portfolio. There was really no growth. They've made some poor acquisitions and, and, uh, and sort of lost their way. But Wrangell Resources uh, was uh, the largest position in, in our portfolio. We had followed uh, the manager of that company, Mark Bristow, for, for, for many years. And then uh, Barrett, um, 18 months ago, ended up taking over uh, Wrangell Resources. And Mark Bristow became the manager of Barrett. And so, we end, so that was an all-stock transaction. And we ended up being a lot, you know, Barrett being a big position in, in the portfolio. And he has uh, turned around uh, Barrett, paid down debt, cut costs, and really put them back on track. Uh, and, and, and one of the major things he did was creating, created a, a joint venture with Newmont uh, for, for Newmont and Barrett's uh, Nevada uh, assets. And he's done a you know, number of other things. So, so that's, you know, following a manager who's delivered. Uh, Newmont uh, was a por uh, portfolio holding along with uh, Gold Corp. Newmont ended up buying Gold Corp. And we believe, you know, we're big fans of the Newmont management, even though they've got a new manager, Gary Goldberg's left, and now Tom Palmer's the CEO. Uh, they both came out of RTZ. They've been at, um, Tom Palmer's been at Newmont for a while. You know, we think they'll succeed in rationalizing, improving uh, Gold Corp's uh, good assets. Uh, Alamos, uh, we ended up with, with a holding in Alamos through, through a RICO and Richemont, two companies, two small Canadian companies that had very good assets in Canada. And, uh, you know, we think that, um, that, that that'll work out well with Alamos, who also had a mine in Mexico and, and, and Turkey. And then finally, just very briefly, um, Masawa was an asset of Rangel's that really wasn't big enough and, and, and hadn't been developed enough for Rangel to make an investment a decision on its base in Senegal. But after the Barrick merger, it just wasn't clearly not important enough uh, to be developed by, by Barrick, which is a you know, much larger company following his takeover of Rangel. And, uh, you know, we were led to believe that, uh, oh, well, Taranga had, had the, the, the fourth company, put the fourth uh, list there. Taranga um, had, a, had an opportunity, uh, ha had a mine very near to Masawa, about 40 kilometers uh, away, and they bought the Masawa mine from Barrick. And that really is a, a, a huge opportunity uh, for for Tarango, and that's been a uh, you know one of our more successful uh, portfolio uh, holdings. Uh, next slide. Next slide. I manage the Gabelli Gold Fund, and there are the classes. Here's just um, a snapshot of of uh, of, uh, of the portfolio as at the end of June. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, here are our top ten holdings and uh, the geographic breakdown. And again, just to show that it's really an all-cap uh, strategy, we don't really focus on the exploration stocks, but rather companies in development and production. Even so, 30% of, of the portfolio is in, in companies with cap, cap, a market cap of less than, than uh, 3 billion. Uh, next slide uh, is performance. This is sort of busy, and I, I don't expect uh, you to take, pay too much attention, but just a couple of points. Um, the column uh, it says earliest common inception. That's the start date of the of the GDX. Now the GDX is the unmanaged uh, gold um, gold equity ETF managed by well, when I say unmanaged, administered by uh, Van Eck. And um, you know, since then, since and 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 it's very small type, but 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 that started on the fifteenth of May two thousand and six. So we have managed to add value uh, to to the unmanaged. ETF and, and you know that's very important to us. I know it looks very small, but it's 3.4 against 0.4. And the second point from 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 that right hand scale is that the gold price has outperformed uh, our returns or, or, or the gold you know, the Gabelli Gold Fund's returns uh, seven seven percent to to to, to three and a half percent. And uh, you know we think we hope <laughs> I, I very much hope that. Um, that uh, we're in, you know, the industry is set up now where where gold shares will do better than um, than than gold bullion. So it's been a, a horrible uh, decade 
uh, up to about 2016, more than the horrible decade. And, and we hope that's passed. And, you know, we think there's been change and, uh, you know, time will tell. But um, certainly in the last five years, we have done better. Than, than the gold price. And, 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 and if we're right about the valuation of these stocks, and if the gold price or should the gold price set at current levels or, or move ahead, you know, I think there'll be plenty of opportunities in what is still a you know, very, very small uh, sector of, uh, of the equity market. You know, thank you so much. Um, I, I just should you know, leave you with just a couple of takeaways. You know, one is you know, negative you know, real rates, I think, are an important driver for, for gold. And second, very low 10-year treasury yield of whatever it is, 65 basis points, means that, that the role of, of treasuries in a diversified 60-40 portfolio is diminished because there's just simply much less room for yields to fall on, 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 on government bonds. And we think this may be a driver for, uh, for asset allocators to maybe put a little bit more uh, emphasis on, 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 uh, on gold. So we do think there is an increasing role for gold in a diversified um, investment portfolio. And on that note, thank you so much for listening. And um, and if you have any questions, you know, we'll try. I'll try and answer them. Thank you. All righty. So at this point in time, we can go ahead and jump into our Q and A section. I believe the plan is for Chris to go ahead and pass these questions over to Caesar for us. Um, looks like we do have some stacked up, Chris, so we should be good to go to jump on into them. Thanks, and uh, thank you, Caesar. It was a great presentation. Um, a couple of questions here. Um, what do you think about the gold mining company Kirkland Lake Gold? Yes, I mean, you know, we're very um, positive on, 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 on that company. Um, it is, um, you know, it's, it's one of our top 10. It's about a 4.8% posi position in the portfolio. Uh, we were big, you know, reasonably important, share, you know, significant shareholders in, in Detour, uh, which we, which Kirkland Lake purchased, uh, and uh, you know we think there's plenty of opportunity for a better capitalized, larger company to 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 uh, to take hold of that very large mine and 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 improve on it. And in fact, today, of course, Kirkland Lake had a had an announcement of drill results from uh, from Detour. So I think that's a yeah, you know, terrific, terrific op uh, opportunity. Great. Um, why is Dundee Precious Metals so undervalued? Low reserve life, difficult metallurgy, political risk. Yeah, I, I think all, all of the, all of the above. I, I, I mean, I'm not sure I've got a really good answer for that. But, it, but, but, you know, I think they took a long time developing their Bulgarian assets. People, you know, Bulgaria is not exactly known for gold mining and their, their, their mines there had um, uh, some base metals in, involved, which made uh, the metallurgy a little tricky, which they seem to have solved. So I think it's just fallen under the radar screen. And, and also Dundee, you know, I think a, a, actually the name maybe uh, as, as, as well caused, um, caused it maybe not to be, um, you know, not to get the, the valuation Dundee's investment advisor in, in, in Canada, an investment bank, and maybe there was a, you know, some feeling of an association uh, but, you know, but between the organizations. Uh, and uh, so, you know, it takes time, but, uh, you know, we think that's, uh, you know, inexpensive. Um, and, and, and it's not a, you know, huge uh, holding in, in our portfolio. It's about a 70 basis point position, but it's an example of a, what we believe to be an undervalued opportunity in the small cap area. Great. Um, how is, is your NAV calculated um, of, the, of the equity purchase metals companies? Yeah, I, I, I mean, Chris, uh, um, Chris, you know, is obviously better able to answer this than I am, but, but he takes, he goes company by company and takes the cash flows generated by their mines and uh, discounts that, you know, after tax and after capex. Uh, from the technical reports, uh, and then discounts that by by um, by five percent to get an NAV for the company, and then really we put a multiple on that based on on qualitative judgments on political risk management, the opportunity to grow the asset. Great. Um, is um, it a cool? 
Sorry. Are you going to keep going, Caesar? Yes. Um, is it a coincidence that the GLD ETF became competitive liquid uh, liquid investment alternatives to gold equities, hence a lower gold price to NEV? Yeah, I think that's a good point, and and absolutely, yeah, I I, I think um, that's absolutely right. But 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 that was much earlier on. I mean, I have to be reminded when the when when the gold GLD that was you know very that was that resulted in a derating and the, but then the larger derating i think took place after 2010 11 13 time when 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 it had been established but you're absolutely right it was um you know prior to that um investors looked to the gold equities and then they had an alternative gold bullion so yes absolutely i think that led to a derating in the in the, uh in the gold shares that's a great point thank you uh, among gold equity companies, which one is your favorite? Well, I'm not sure how to answer that. I mean, among my children, which one is my favorite? You know, you've got to be tricky. But um, well, you know, all I can say is that um, that you know, our two large positions are Newmont and Barrett. I mean, they're lower risk, uh, and uh, and uh, you know they have a diversified group group of mines. But um, you know, certainly. Certainly, other names that, that that you know I'd like to talk about uh, are Endeavour, which we've been you know adding to uh, recently, EDV in in, uh, uh, in Canada, um, the Taranga, you know that that uh, that uh, we like a lot. Silver, uh, wheat, and precious is our favourite um, streaming uh, and uh, and uh, royalty company. So um, other. Ones that we've been sort of adding to uh, uh, include um, a Cisco Gold Royalties. You know, we think there's an opportunity in, in that. We've you know add, added uh, added to our position in, in that. But you know, Kirkland Lake, I, you know, I think is uh, you know a terrific opportunity. You know, right now uh, uh, today, you know, that had been hit and it never really you know recovered uh, much in 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 the in the run up. But then just recently it hasn't been it. So, you know, I think Kirkland Lake is is you know a fine, you know, very good opportunity, strong balance sheet, good assets in in the right geographies, namely Canada and uh, uh, and Australia. Great. Um, copper seems to have beaten gold substantially in the last year or so. Do you have an opinion on this? Well, well, this is a gold fund, and uh, you know we really want to focus. Uh, uh, our clients' assets on, on, on gold equities. You know, gold is a monetary asset and that's what we're interested in now. Some of the gold companies also produce copper, um, but, but very few. So for example, we don't own Freeport, which is I'm sure a fine investment, a you know, wonderful copper producer. They, they have the Grassberg uh, mine, which is probably one of the premium you know, copper gold mines, if not the, uh, in the world, but it's not a portfolio. Uh, holding uh, of uh, of this fund. Uh, is the Gabelli Gold Fund available as a mutual fund and ETF, ETF or just a mutual fund? Yeah, it's just a mutual fund. Um, do you think that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency um, change the focus from gold and can be one of the reasons for gold companies doing so poorly? I think... The reason for gold companies doing so poorly was was, was sort of self-inflicted, uh, where they made a mad scramble for uh, for growth uh, in in the last up cycle, and uh, took on a lot of debt and couldn't deliver, and costs rose uh, significantly. Actually, I was looking today at, at that from the early two thousands, you know, when the costs were three hundred something, it went up to well over. 1100 or something by by 2011 so they received none of that margin and and then got punished so i think it was mostly self self-inflicted but yes i mean you know i think there was a, you know a sense that here was another alternative so outside the banking system uh to to, to so yeah i'm sure bitcoin um uh, did uh you know did have an, a, an impact but i don't think a major impact i think mine Uh, why do you think Giuliano Gold is underperforming? I, 
I mean, I'm not. We don't own that uh, in the portfolio, um, and so I'm not even sure if it if it has underperformed. Um, it 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 ha owns half a mine in Ghana with uh, with gold fields. It's it's I think very inexpensive, but I'm not fully up to date with uh, with that uh, with that situation. But but my sense is that. Uh, that mine is generating cash. They've got uh, exploration opportunities, uh, you know, around their 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 current mine, and uh, I think they're extending the life of the mine. I, you know, I'm sure it's, it, you know, it, that's an opportunity. I would think. I mean, it is a small cap. Some of the small caps have been have been overlooked, and as I said, it just has, uh, you know, it has a joint venture in in their mine with uh, with Goldfield. Okay. Um, is it better to, do you think it's better to do an acquisition without leverage like Kirkland Lake Gold did or a levered acquisition like Barrick Gold? Well, we don't believe in leverage in, in the resource sector, well, I don't. Um, when you uh, don't have control of your revenue, of your top line, um, I don't think that the Debt is, <coughs> excuse me, is <coughs> is helpful. Uh, you know, when you have a, a very stable uh, top line, then um, then it's easier, more conducive to, to taking on debt. Now, I understand that may might be counterintuitive with a very low interest rate environment, but traditionally, historically, uh, resource companies don't use debt, and I think that's a good reason for that. And I think, you know, to the extent that the gold company management's have a historic perspective, they'll be reluctant to use debt uh, in, in, you know, in the current environment. Do you own any Argonaut gold in your portfolio? No, not a, no. Okay. Um, what's your take on IAU, uh, the IAU ETF for gold exposure? How much gold portfolio percentage should one have in an entire portfolio? Well, I mean, I'm I, I, you know, I'm not sure I'm qu I'm qualified uh, to, to 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 answer, but I mean, you know, that that two things: gold, gold bullion, is is it's just currency, it's just money. That's it. Uh, no risk, uh, and 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 it, and it should maintain its purchasing power. Gold equities are are, are an investment. Uh, there's room for growth. There's room for disappointment. There's room for income. And uh, so, you know, your risk tolerance, so gold uh, allocation could and should really contain both. I mean, the volatility and expected return on the equities, despite what's happened, should be higher. So if you're having just a gold equity exposure, it should be a smaller exposure in my, uh, in my opinion. But it needs to be big enough to mean something, but not um, so significant that, that um, that if something bad happened, you wouldn't benefit from the rest of your portfolio. So, you know, 5, 10, 12%, maybe 15, nothing. Okay. Uh, when you analyze a gold company, what's the most important financial analysis parameter? Well, I think the, 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 um, well, really is, 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 the most important financial parameters is, is, is really their, their, their margin after all their costs is probably the most important. Um, because it's what, you know, cash operating costs are, are, are I mean, they're more, you know, they're about 80% of the story, but, but a gold company or any resource company is, 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 is a declining asset. So you've always got to be thinking about how much is it costing the company to replace their reserves or even to grow their reserves? So, so you need to factor in that, um, that, that, that margin for maintaining, uh, you know, maintenance capex and, 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 and then what I call maintaining the reserve capex. Um, okay. Uh, what is your net margin percentage? Well, I mean, that varies uh, company by company. I don't have it on a portfolio basis. And, uh, but, you know, margins, of course, have exploded for, uh, for, 
for the for the sector, you know, as the gold price has risen and uh, and, and and costs have stayed uh, static. Okay, great, uh, Caesar. If there's any final comments you have, it looks like that's all the questions that we have here. Great. I, I mean, the, there's you know we got a comment uh, or a question rather on on you know how we value the companies when we go through mine by mine. You know what we what we've done. Uh, since about two, September 19, uh, 2016, is to really plot our, our, our NABs on what we think the, the, the companies are worth relative to the gold price. And, and uh, actually, I just ran that chart today, and um, they're showing that, that the gold equities are undervalued uh, relative to, to the gold price. I mean, not as much as they were back in March, but, um, but, but uh, you know, only basically three other times in the last few years that they've been this, this cheap, uh, once in uh, 2018, uh, and then back in a couple of times, well, once in, in, in 2019. So, so, so there isn't much euphoria, in our opinion, uh, in the gold equities, despite you know, what some would consider to be a good, you know, a, a good absolute performance you know, in the last year and, uh, and year to date. I mean, the gold price has done more than than um, than what the gold uh, equities have done in our, according to our work. And uh, on on that basis, you, you, um, I'd like to thank you, uh, you know, very much for for allowing uh, me the opportunity and the firm the opportunity to talk about you know our approach to this sector. And as I said, um, please contact uh, my you know my uh, my colleague Chris Mancini. Um, with anything unfavorable and come to me if you've got any favorable comments. Um, thanks very much. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us today and for the absolutely valuable presentation you brought for us. It was a pleasure for us to feature someone that's seen some of the successes that you have and with the wealth of experience that you've had as well. Uh, for those of us, uh, for all of you that are in the audience right now, um, a complete video recap of this, uh, the presentation and the Q&A session will be posted here on YouTube shortly on our channel, and it will also be available on GuruFocus.com uh, over there in the history of all of our videos that we've done in the past. Thank you all for joining us today, and we hope to see you next week with our next featured guest, and we wish everyone well moving on into the future.